All right, if this works, um, well, I'll post it. If it's uh, just a learning experience, I really won't, I guess. So what you're looking at is um, supposedly, it's supposed to be me, but I decided to use the um, overhead camera as my as the host camera. And then I'm sharing the screen, which is this thing here. It's not the best high res image. Um, it's not, not the best image I have right now. I'm using MS Paint just due to the fact I can do this. I can, uh, I can really um, play around and have some fun. Um, you know, I'll change maybe the mouse cursor with um, iFran view because this is nowhere near the resolution. It's not the latest picture as well that I have. I'm just going to say this. I am mind-bogglingly stunned that how fast things are going for me, uh, figuring out um, how many troops are available, like everything. Like I know exactly how much is available for all the Russians. And I know exactly how much is available for all the all the Austro-Hungarians, and I'm about sixty percent of the way done for the Germans. Absolutely stunned, uh, just blown away. Let's zoom out a little bit, see if that works. So there, you can kind of see in um, the front, and then we'll just go across, and then I can go over with some numbers. Uh, trust me, this is just uh, post analysis number two. So you can see here, this is going to be one of the main objectives, obviously, for the Russians. We'll go through some numbers uh, fairly, uh, and I think I mentioned how I got across this. The other thing I'm start, and I did use the same template more or less for the Austro-Hungarians and the the Germans, uh, just slightly different to represent some of their peculiarities or uh, you know uh, who they were, their makeup and their difficulties in doing certain things. So, for example, like I said, every fourth infantry division that is created at this moment in time, it's probably going to change uh, for every nation or every force over time as uh, things get harder to do. Uh, for example, right now, the Russians, every fourth infantry division must be a reserve infantry division if you're going to create one. Um, that could change over time. It may turn out to be one out of every three and so on and so forth which uh, unfortunately for the Austro-Hungarians right now, because I'm trying to represent their difficulties in uh, that bit, uh, it, it's an abstraction of a lot of things, but there's still, I still want to have um, the amount of um, cost, it, it, you know, to make an inf infantry division, just like I did with the Hotzendorf divisions and whatnot, it's just a lower strength point thing but it's still going to cost you a lot of money or a lot of supply so every third um infantry division that is created for the austro-hungarians so that's so when i took a look at the total strength points that were left on the board that's what i went with at the moment in time the germans are the best of the bunch um, for every five uh infantry divisions that are created it must be a reserve infantry infantry division of course, the easiest for me was the Russians. They've only got one front now due to the fact that they've signed the non-aggression pact with the Ottomans. They've only got this to deal with. That being said, I didn't have to. I was shocked. I didn't have to deal with the Austro-Hungarian big adjustment as much as I wanted to, and it's not good for them. I'll say this. they Yes, they've got the shortest front to deal with. But they've got two fronts to deal with. And when I took a look at the, uh, the uh, grand campaign and thought there was going to be some discrepancies for reinforcements coming in for the schedules between the, um, um, the Galicia um, scenario and the grand campaign, there is none because there's, I didn't see any uh, reinforcements coming their way um, up to January. Like everything goes towards Serbia. That's being abstracted. So I'm, don't know what I'm going to do with that at this moment in time. I'll have to, I think I'm not going to divert any troops uh, right now. What I'm going to do is start do, diverting energy, which is like, um, man, you know, that universal currency in some way, form or, or another I'd love to do, which will have a, abs which will have a detrimental or will have an effect on the Serbian front. But it will still be abstracted. I'll just like, it'll, it'll be like a die roll modifier or you, you get the idea. That's what I'm trying to uh, 
uh, get across. The Germans, I haven't looked at that yet. It's still, yet again, going to be an abstracted version for the Germans, even though I still want to do something like, uh, I've got to subtract some strength points if I want to go that way. Okay, you ready now for taking a look at, like I said, I'm shocked how, how fast it's going. Um, long way, away, away, away for figuring out when I'm going to start com uh, doing combats. And I'll tell you one thing, it's kind of like similar in the, uh, some way. I remember Nache repeatedly mentioning on his live stream saying, you know, like some people love painting more than, um, you know, gaming and some people love gaming and uh, some people love making the model. Like, everybody's got their own. And if somebody or just some, you know, some people love doing it all like equally or whatever. And I think for me, when it comes down to this, I'm way more interested in planning than actually playing. I just, I'm not all that interested in the combats and the die rolls. I just lose my, like, okay, I'm in beyond glory mode. I've just been like eating uh, ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and supper. It's just nuts. It has just been incredible. Okay, so let's go uh, into some numbers. Uh, like I said, I'm about 60% of the way done for the uh, Germans, but it is just an eye opener. Uh, I'm just, um, things are going extremely well, extremely well. I'm, oh my God, there's so many dots being connected. That's uh, twinkle toes, as you can imagine. So I'm going to give you the total number of infantry strength points that are on, uh, that's on the table uh, for every side. And um, here, let's zoom in a little bit, and then I can, uh, we'll, I'll go slowly back and forth, and you guys can take a look. All those funky things are the railheads. I, like I said, I, I don't know if I mentioned, I popped on all the fortresses. Remember, the Germans and Austro-Hungarians stripped all their garrison troops uh, to make Festung and Hotzendorf divisions. So uh, they're there. There's still concrete and whatnots there, but there ain't too many people there. It's kind of like a few of those forts uh, with Verdun, you know, just like I think Duomont, there's like barely anybody there. Anyways, you get the idea. Russians, not, not the same thing. They've still got their uh, troops there. Okay, so Germany has 216 uh, strength points on the board. I'm going to say this. When I saw the Austrians, how little strength points they have on the board, and what they got to deal with, I went, holy shoot, they're in a lot of effing trouble, um, and which is like historically good, I guess you could say. So I'm like, wow, this is kind of interesting. I was shocked at how uh, they have hardly anything on the board. Um, and they're, like I said, nothing coming. So I have to like produce something out of thin air, like it's going to take time. It's, they got to, it's going to be tricky. Now, when I said before, I don't know in the last video if anybody was paying attention or whatever, <laughs> whatever, I was mentioning that I wanted the Germans to really figure out a way of enticing the Austro-Hungarians to use this rail line. Two things about uh, rail lines, engineering, and so on and so forth. Remember, I don't know if you guys uh, remember, there were three engineering uh, Austro-Hungarian engineering uh, regiments that were on the west side of the Visloka, which was part of the Katowice Agreement. They were under German control. They ended up being taken out of play and uh, because I said, no, they're going off to um, basically Prussian rail engineering high school or university. They're going to get um, trained in the, in the German, <coughs> German style. And when they come back, they can convert German rail at the same rate as a German engineering regiment. So part of the deal is going to be uh, the Germans are going to keep those three uh, German, uh, Austro-Hungarian um, um, engineering regiments. They're also going to use this rail, but the Austro-Hungarians are going to ask for, I think about, I'm looking for about maybe 10, um, so that would be 20 strength points, man. That's significant. We're going to ask for 10, um, oh, no, that would be three. So maybe we will ask for a diminished or something. Uh, but we would like, because uh, the German, I've got, uh, I've got different strength uh, points, obviously, for all the infantry divisions, because that's the way it was. That's just showing an abstraction of their effectiveness. Uh, for, for example, um, 
an infantry brigade for the Germans. It's a three, four, where the other guys are two fours. Um, so I'm going to give them, I uh, want to give them um, 10 hex worths units of uh, German retreatable uh, resistance. That's what uh, the Austro-Hungarians want, AKA a bit of boost to their morale. So that's going to be the trade-off. Uh, the Germans are going to send over, you can call them whatever the hell you want. Uh, they're going to be uh, inserted, um, embedded or whatever the hell into some, uh, before there was only three, now we want 10. Um, and that's the way it goes. Yep, I like that. I like that number. Okay, we'll go with 10. And uh, we'll see if we can sign off. Remember, there's this is just at this military level. Everybody's chit chatting because they know, uh, like, we got to not even worry about whether or not there's going to be a war. We have to think there's going to be a war. This is diplomats hoping to God there's never going to be a war, and so on and so forth. We're just going with it. That's all that other chit chat for newspaper or headlines and whatever. Okay. So Germany has 216 strength points and a 1,400 kilometer, uh, kilometer front. Let's zoom out a little bit. No, I didn't see everything. We'll just go like whatever. Austria-Hungary, like I said, has a sh the shortest front by far. 135 strength points, though. It's like, oh, my God. When I started counting them up, I went, oh, yeah, yeah, you're in deep F. At 680 kilometer front. So nice. It's not very big. But it's still fairly big compared like what the Germans have when you see what the Germans are able to do. Russia has 278 strength points sitting on my table right now. Remember, and they got the Caucasus army showing up primarily. And I've got all that. Like I said, I know exactly what the Austro-Hungarians have. I know exactly what the Russians have. Uh, everything. I'm just going to figure out the Germans, but we still got miles to go, but it's exciting times for me. So Russia has 278 uh, strength points on the, uh, on the table and 1,700 kilometer front. I just wanted to look at what happened at the end of this game. And I'm still going to go into a bazillion other things. Trust me. So that let, now let's get into two different, um, calculations one is not very good i think and the other one is more of a proper good ratio if you think the way i'm looking at it. so let's go to front uh front to strength points ratio that to me is a bit uh in, more interesting as far as i'm concerned um so for germany it's 4.8 uh they've got 4.8 more front in kilometer terms um for every strength point, like to, to strength points, if you want to look at it that way. For Austria-Hungary, it's five to one, even though they've got such a smaller amount of area, it's just their strength points suck a hind tit. For Russia, it is brutal. I was shocked. That one, This one was a shocker. I didn't expect it to be this bad. 6.1 to one. So they've got 6.1 bits of front to, uh, to one point of uh, strength point, it's not good. What, what does that come down to? Uh, essentially, that, uh, for Germany, it's zero point, and that's why it's like such a weird number for me anyways, 0 0.21 strength points per kilometer of front. Uh, Austria-Hungary, 0 0.2. Uh, it was like 0 0.18 or uh, 198, but you know, obviously I can round up. And uh, Russia, yet again, the most telling, it's brutal, 0 0.16. Um, so I've got, I'm looking at that, you know what I mean, from a logistics um, and operational uh, view. Like, we, we got to look at it strategically, but I have to start talking. The operational uh, commanders and whatnot have to start looking, uh, talking to the strategical guys and saying, looking, going, okay, uh, we have to start looking at whether or not your objectives are smart. And remember, I was also mentioning there's a beautiful little uh, PDF, uh, the Government of Canada, uh, it's SMART. It's a, I don't know, an acronym for something or other, but it was really good. And I was like, okay, I think it was about um, work-related whatever. So I'm like, well, this is kind of work-related. If uh, you're a logistics officer or whatever, trying to figure out what the hell to do, that's that. Let's see how this works. God, I hope it did because um, anyways, I'm just saying, um, 
I'm on 11 out of 12 cylinders. I'll say that. Oof, I'm enjoying this. Yep.